Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility, episode one, entitled One Small Step on a Bicycle. In the show tonight, we have Yolandi Rust, who's going to cycle around Africa, and Ray Chaplin, who's going to circumnavigate the earth. Thank you for listening. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first show of Let's Talk Possibility. I am so excited to be here. My name is Talana Simpson, for those of you that don't know me. This has been a dream of mine for a long time, and I'm feeling very privileged to be in the room with um, four other people that, that just totally inspire me, and so excited to, to join um, or share with you their, their stories. Um, just to start off by a bit of introduction, my co-host, um, one of the guys I was mentioning, is Jacobus Milan. Hi, guys. Um, welcome. Um, yeah. My friends call me Jack, so call me Jack. Um, yeah, we're honored to be here tonight, um, talking to, to you guys about what is possible. Yeah. Um, let's talk possibility, and we'll be sharing tonight with you mindsets and ideas and things about what we can actually achieve if we just believe it. So, Yeah, and the idea of the show really is just to... to ex- introduce you to to some amazing people who are are ordinary people like us but are doing extraordinary things and two of them are in in here with us and that is Yolandi Rust she's going to be the the first woman to cycle around Africa how's it Yolandi hello thanks for coming thank you and then we're also very privileged to have Ray Chaplin (coughs) going to be the first man to go around circumnavigate the world via the north and south poles using only human power yeah, it's going to be his claim to fame really, really soon. So we're lucky that he's up here from Cape Town and managed to t- to join us. Thanks for the invite. Cool. So yeah, the idea of the show, I think we wanted to start off by, by because it's our first show, is, is really just to, to, I think we touched it, but explore what is possible. Mm. From yeah, everything from chatting to experts to, as we say, in ordinary people, to sharing books, to sharing videos, to sharing anything, that they would just show us that, that there are amazing things that are possible in this world. Mm. And what it is that, that we need to get over in the mindset and the, the tools, techniques, or just ideas that would help us. Yeah, I think, I think it's important for us to, to help people understand that um, the whole idea with this is to help them see that what we see in the other people, what they're achieving, mm. if we see them them, then we actually have it in ourselves and we can unlock that and use that to achieve it, what we want to achieve. Um, and I think we're going we're gonna to have some great stuff tonight with you, Lundy. And Ray, and actually see uh, if people can see that that if these two can do it, what they're attempting, then I'm sure um, what they want to attempt in their lives is possible. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Like I said, it's definitely made made my, my little journeys and my goals mm. seem much more possible. Hearing what you guys are are going to achieve, and maybe that's what we should start off with. It's just yeah. So we said, like, um, Yolanda, you're going to be the first woman to cycle around Africa and, I mean, yeah. I mean literally on a bicycle solo. So yeah. Tell us a bit more about your, your vision, your adventure. Um, okay. Well, I'm launching in three weeks' time um, on the 27th of April, Freedom Day from Camps Bay in Cape Town. And um, the idea is to be the first woman to yeah, circumnavigate Africa on a bicycle solo. So I'll be traveling about approximately 40,000 kilometers and mm-hmm. going through 34 African countries. And it's going to take you almost two years? or I'm it? aiming on doing it in two years, but realistically it would most probably be more like two and a half years. Okay, well. Yeah. It's still a no. fair uh, bit of time. Directly or, or just in one go? One go, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah we, we're going to join it for uh, the first couple of kilometers on 27th of April. and then Yeah, the first day. Woo-hoo. <laughs> in a year, what, two years, two and a half years, we'll be back there in Cape Town to, okay, to welcome well, her in. And cool. the, only yeah. the only way we're going to be able to, to know is, is, ho- is through technology and that. And but Talana, I've heard, a ru- I've heard a rumor yeah. that you're going to join Yolandi as she crosses the Mozambican border and cycle the last mostly down the coast with her. It's a possibility. Reality? Really? Are you going to? It's fairly I'd flat, I promise. Uh, yeah, no, there's like no like heels Joburg. there. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. No, I, I would really, um, I yeah. think it's just, just got to, to make it happen. But I would love to join you on a bit. Definitely. I mean, that would be awesome. Because for me, 
that is a big thing crossing the border back into sa you know in my mind that's that picture of back on home ground i would most probably really literally kiss the ground and start <laughs> crying <laughs> <laughs> and i'll be there to photograph it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> video it <laughs> live streaming <laughs> ashwin needs to get solana on a unicycle pedaling backwards so she should video that thing front on a unicycle that's nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> ray give us a brief uh, brief overview of your your aim your purpose what are you um, trying to do I've come from an IT background. Um, I spent eight and a half years as an IT manager and just got sick and tired of the lifestyle and all the rest and had the dream of sort of touching on one or two relatively minor expeditions, sort of more as an annual leave than yeah, permanent yeah, job. Yeah. And as things would happen, um, 2006, I made the decision to cut IT completely. Oh. And the intention at the time was to travel from the South Pole to the North Pole using only human power. And... Yeah. A few months after I made that decision to move back to South Africa, I heard about a guy, Jason Lewis, British mm. guy, who left in 1994 and was in his 13th year of circumnavigating the world in the west-east direction wow. using human power. And I wow. said, well, hang on, if he can go all the way around the world, and I'm planning on going halfway around, why don't I just fall off the other end and just complete the circle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's my intention wow. is to travel north south around the world via the, via the north and south poles and using only my arms and my legs to propel me forward okay so cycling walking skiing kayaking hopefully not too much swimming <laughs> <laughs> stay out of the water yeah no, no, no. <laughs> especially bring blooming colds oh, well oh, salt water freezes at about minus 1.7 so there's a chance that if you do fall overboard could still be sub-zero water yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, your land is leaving yes. on the 27th of April. April. Yeah. When are you leaving, right? I'm leaving in August this year. In August. Now, I'll probably be the last weekend in August. Okay. Um, I want to leave on the 1st of September, and damn, someone else has booked that date for a departure from Cape Town. So. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 it's a lot of that happening in Cape Town. <laughs> so, yeah. so anyway, we've got Cecilia listening in, and she says that, that you guys must say hi to all the S. How do you say it? SKA? SKA. SKA. African, African partner, partner countries. countries. And yeah, what I don't know if it was with Cecilia. So they, it's the, te- tell us a bit about the telescope. Basically, it's project, SK's so. uh, square kilometer array. Um, and it's a, it's basically a super telescope. Effectively, they, mm. they're basically bidding between, um, it's actually, it was South Africa, but it's now Africa mm. and uh, Australia. And basically, some of the telescopes are going to be going up, basically in a spiral arm up into Africa. Um, basically, it's, it's amazing. It's so going to be an incredible, incredible project that they're going to be building. I remember seeing that we'll be able to go all the way to to see where time started. Uh, it goes the very, very far back, kind yeah. of thing. So um, it's, it's, it's another bang. huge possibility uh, opening. But, but um, yeah, so she says mm. those countries are going to have it. You have to go and say hi to them. Now I'm, I'm going to I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to ask a big question, and it's why. Hi. <laughs> Quite simple. Oh, Once grandkids run while you can. You don't need tell us, tell us, uh, uh, tell us. Well, not briefly, but I think give us an idea of. Um, I think the reason the reason is so important for us to do things, mm. um, and it, and it kind of drives us to to achieve the things we achieve in life. What is it that that? What's your why? What is your reason for for actually doing this kind of thing? I mean, you're one woman. Going by yourself around Africa, that's quite intense. I think, I mean, it's taken me a while to figure it out because that's always the first question people ask. And um, I don't know, it never feels like I, c- I can give an adequate answer. Mm. But, you know, in a nutshell for me, it's just because I feel that I have this life here and now once and I want to make the most of it. Mm and do what I enjoy and try and maybe get other people to do the same, you know, go out, live full out, live your dreams and don't let fears keep you from doing seemingly crazy stuff like cycling around Africa or cycling around the world or, you know, going around the world. So, you know, I I just want to get people to think out of the box, you know, take a step outside. Because it's not a quick thing. It's not like you decide yesterday I'm going around Africa Mm -hmm. and you jump on your bike (laughs) and you go. (laughs) This has been quite a process. It's it's been uh, it's been an amazing process and learning curve and it's taken time. It takes you know planning and you think like I can remember when I decided I wanted to do this. Yes, I did want to just jump on my bike and go, 
Mm. But you know, three and a half years later, now I get to do it. It's taken three and a half years. Yeah. Wow. Three and a half years. Of so, time. what has been some of your, your steps in getting to to the three and a half years? So, obviously, you had the, the urge and you just want to get your bike and go, but realize mm. there's there's a lot more. Because I mean, I've spoken to you plenty of times. I know how much preparation is in, but yeah, what are some of the yeah. steps and I stages you've gone through to get I mean to some three of weeks the away? some of the big stages were doing um, other trips just to make sure, or just to familiar, you know, get familiar with what it's like to be on the road for a long time. Mm. What it is like physically and mentally and emotionally to be on your own on the bike away from your friends and your support system yeah. so and, and those trips you're referring to was the one we went from Joburg Joburg to Cape, Cape Town, Town yeah in 2008 then? and then around SA that I um, finished in 2010 January 2010 yeah and that's actually when I met you when yes you that, yeah that when I, I got back <laughs> following you on, on that trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah. so what I hear is it's it's no, instead of just jumping right into the the main big thing mm. that you want to do, it's it's finding smaller steps that that mm. prepare Smaller you chunks. Yeah, yeah to, even to though to you might want that. to just jump in, um, in hindsight now I do realize there was a reason why I had to go through all these, you know, hurdles and um, a, a lot of stuff that I had to learn and grow as a person. So now I'm ready for what I'm about to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So As has it been similar for you, Ray? Have you Absolutely. also had a lot of... Pl I know it's been years, yeah. I think, in, in a lot of stages on preparation. Yeah, you mentioned 2006. It's been like... Uh, and years. I was planning polar expeditions since 2003, wow. so... Mm. Wow. Um, and even then, uh, a lot of what I've done, uh, like cycling across Africa, hundreds of people have done it. Cycling mm. across through the Middle East, hundreds of people have done it. Europe, North and South America. Skiing to the South Pole from sort of 80 degrees... That's yeah. done a few times a year. Same with the North Pole. It's done a few times, except this year from the Canadian side. No one, no one even started. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just cold. too rough. Yeah, I was going to say, why is that? It was just bad weather or something? They couldn't even take off to get planes near, people near wow. to the starting points. Wow. So, no, that poses a major threat to my expedition. But there are people who've done certain legs, and there are enough people that, even if I get a 1% response from inquiries and questions that I send out, I am getting valid and good info Mm. on those sections mm. my hurdle was crossing from scandinavia to the arctic <coughs> circle to the polar ice cap yeah. yeah and getting from south america to antarctica and back from antarctica to cape town that is a big big little those trip were there. three <laughs> three sections on some of the worst seas imaginable yeah. i mean icebreakers tankers container ships go missing not just, not just get damaged boat. and destroy, <laughs> like <laughs> disappear. <laughs> they disappear off the, <laughs> off the satellite <laughs> tracking screen. So, and you go, hang on, I'm going to go and pedal across that in a six meter boat. Yeah. And mm. people just go, you're mad. And I've got boat builders who are saying they refuse to be associated with anything. They won't even build it. I can pay them 10 million rand. They refuse to build it because they, they would they feel don't liable. Be associated. Yeah. There's, they, they don't want to put their company's name at risk. So you've got to say, sit, rejection, 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 rejection. I think that, I swear, I'll never walk into a bar and feel rejected if a girl <laughs> says, no, I can't buy her a drink. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, who cares? <laughs> Next. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, first step, get used to rejection. If you wanted to oh, go yes. do, do something yeah. and get sponsored or get assistance from people who've been mm. in a similar boat, get used to rejection. So, yeah. so, yes. so how do you get used to rejection? Besides, obviously, you know, because I hear what I'm hearing is almost like we haven't got to your big why, but the the reason why you want to do this is is enough that it keeps you going. So when you face those rejections, you, you just keep asking. But how else, has, besides just experiencing a number of rejections to get to get over it, how else have you, or what advice would you give to someone who keeps facing brick walls? And if if it's in your mind, if in your mind it's fifty fifty that you want to do something, you'll hit that breaking point very soon. Yeah. Of one too many rejections, you know, mm. bugger, it's, yeah. it is impossible. <coughs> if you know 100%, take no, que <laughs> no questions asked, take no prisoners, I am doing this. doesn't matter how many rejections, how harsh. I've been told I'm, I'm a single person, I'm not a team. Yes, I've also been told you're an individual, that's a problem. I've been mm. told I'm white, so I don't fit the sponsorship criteria. Mm -hmm. I've been told I'm male. <laughs> So <laughs> suddenly three things which I can't I'll change. change. <laughs> it's not what like, are you going to do about that? Right? It's not like, hang on, you're not offering us enough branding space on a t-shirt. Okay, we'll increase it by 20%. Yeah. Unless I go and <laughs> have a few op painful operations, I can't change those. Mm. So you just go, you know what? 
they're not worthy of my expedition. Mm. They don't have the yes. vision. They don't have the power. They mm. don't have the same mindset. So I don't actually want them associated with me because yeah. I don't want to know. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, but okay, we'll support you. When you're in the polar regions, when you're in the deepest, darkest corners of Africa and the chips are down and things are going against you, you want to know that the company is being, behind you. Yeah, providing, be it funding, be it providing product, that they are there no matter what. Mm. It's not a case of, oh, they're in trouble, we're out of here, goodbye. Mm. Um, which a lot of expeditions have That's had. Yeah. And so I mean, after a while you get to realize there's a reason behind um, why you're not supposed to hook up with certain companies or certain individuals. Because like Ray said, you know, when when you really are stuck and the chips are down, you want to know that the partners you have on board, um, they're going to back you. They're going to be there for you. So, yeah. So, Ray, tell us your why. <laughs> what, is, what, is, what is driving you? What is, I mean, when you're in that boat trying <laughs> to cross... ICCs. I mean, and just, just how, how many hours is it? Days, months is it? And you on your own okay, on that the boat across the. Well, you told the, me. the first leg's about one and a half thousand k's that I'm in the boat. Um, one and a half thousand k's. <laughs> and I should, if all goes well and I hit the timing right, I should have about three hours of daylight today. Wow. So I'm should in you get a bit of a suntan? Not. No. <laughs> <laughs> no the, the boat we're developing is fully enclosed, self writing so I can literally roll as the waves mm. hit me and come back up and shake myself off and keep going mm. um the idea of so just to um explain better explain this mm. boat yes you everyone well, a lot of people are familiar with the ocean rowing boats um peter van ketz rode mm. across the atlantic that's an open boat you've got oars sticking out the side mm. you're open you're exposed to the elements unfortunately after cycling 20 30 000 k's across continents your upper body is just not strong enough to go and sit and row mm. for 12 hours a day Mm. So keep those legs active and pedal. And pedal. And pedal. Mm. Body's a lot more efficient that way. That way we can enclose the boat completely so I'm out of the elements and, yeah, better, more efficient, hopefully. Um, first leg's one and a half thousand Ks. The guys are saying you can do up to 100 Ks a day in it if all goes well. And that's in nice flat, calm waters. So 60 meter waves could <laughs> alter that quite <laughs> drastically. <laughs> so we're planning first leg for three weeks. Um, yeah. After which I hit land again, so that'll be moved on to my next location, wow. which is about another 1,200k stretch, and the last stretch is about 8,000k. <coughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm, I'm pretty sure, as, as, as Jack was asking, your why is going gonna, is gonna to get you through that last 8,000 yeah. stretch after, and it's it's a couple of years more than. How long is your expedition going to A whole gonna bunch. <laughs> 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 it, taking on the normal expedition philosophy of take each day as it comes mm. if the weather's good and you're feeling good push the distance if it's not hold back mm. um six seven eight nine ten years if all goes 100 sure. percent wow. according yeah. to plan mm. wow with a little bit of logistic manipulation and human body holding up we can do it in 80 weeks i believe 80 weeks, weeks. so yeah. jules verne wrote around the world in 80 days you're doing it in 80 weeks we're going for 80 weeks human power 80 weeks why? Wow. Wow. Okay, now let's get, yeah, let's get to this, this why now. This this the, the human body is, is capable of so much, be it mentally or physically. Mm. We don't tap into even 1% of that, I believe. Yeah. 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 You get a few guys and some will de debate <laughs> whether it really is a physical um, <laughs> feat or some altering substance that helps them along. But you look at the Tour de France cyclists. Yeah. Mm. They go and hammer it day in, day out. Yeah. That distance is actually possible day after day after day after it day. It is possible. The difference is they're racing it. Yeah. Yes. If you mm. go out there and you just turn your legs and you do 180 k's a day quite comfortably. Yes. So as long as you, you're looking after mm. your diet and you're staying healthy, you can maintain that. Mm. Whether we can maintain it for 80 weeks, we'll soon find <laughs> out. <Yeah. laughs> okay. So that's the 80 weeks. Yeah. The intention is 80 weeks around the world. So what is eighty weeks? That's just under twenty months. Yeah. Twenty months. What is your big Crazy. reason for for going and putting your body through that and to showcase what can be done? What um, is possible? Yeah, what is possible? <laughs> um, Sorry, uh, we just had a question from the guy that's in IRC. Is how do you keep yourself motivated? Mm. Well, I'll take it that's Corbus. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, Corbus has just completed the highest peak in each province 
mm. in oh, South really? Africa in less than nine days. Wow. Wow. Eight and a half days, the highest peak cool in each province, Kourbis. which is absolutely phenomenal. So Amazing. Well, done, well done to Kourbis. Well yeah. done. Another guy pushing what's possible. Yeah. Um, how do you keep yourself motivated? Think of home. Think, think of the happy place. Yeah. Um, think of all the friends, family who through hell and high water have put their arm around you and gone, mm. you can actually do this. Let's do it. Yeah. Cool. And in a way you think, I might let them down if I don't do this. Exactly. I mean, taking <laughs> so. on something like this is actually also a big responsibility because mm. you realize how many people are out there. Oh, you don't realize. I mean, yeah, don't. only yeah. recently I've realized how many people there are out there that I don't even know about that are supporting me. And you think, you know what? All these people are behind me. So I've, I've got to do this. You know, and the whole time I just have that picture in my mind of the finish line, you know? Mm crossing that finish line because yeah, although you'll be alone you're actually not alone you're never no, no. really alone no, no. Well, well Ray might be alone <laughs> in the middle of the <laughs> ocean somewhere I always talk to myself <laughs> I'm never alone <laughs> <laughs> that helps you have a split personality <laughs> but Ray's also never what's, alone. what's when you're talking about the motivation not only because people are watching you because I, I get that from my own you know projects that I do mm. but but I think for with both of you you have a, a different angle to to you, you you're doing it not just for because you want to do it. And I know, Ray, you bring in a whole education component yeah. and Yolanda, you bring in a whole lot of, of, of music. Yes. Yeah, so maybe you want to just share a bit yeah. of, of that part because I think that makes it bigger than, than yeah, just... Yeah, I think, I think uh, Yolanda, you give us... I know you, you, you spoke about music and um, communicating with people with your music and give us give us that side of things. Um, what, 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 is, what, do you, what do you want to achieve there? What is... Well, the whole theme of my trip is con <laughs> okay, the whole theme of my trip is connecting through music. So what I'll be doing is I'm carrying two small JMB <coughs> African drums with me and that will be my tools of, you know, connecting with people wherever I go. So when I get into little villages around Africa where we can't understand one another, Music will be my way of connecting with those people and sharing with them and, um, you know, learning from one another. And in that way, it's kind of connecting and uniting, Af you know, Africa and the people of Africa through music. With, with music. Yeah. And why have you chosen music? Is there, what, what is I it? Just, uh, some, uh, it's just one of my passions. I yeah. mean, um, she's a singer. She's yeah. a singer. <laughs> yeah. When she's not cycling, music. she's singing. <laughs> yeah, music is, uh, is plays a big role in my life. Is that mm. your background that you come from or...? Pretty much, yeah. I haven't been active in music for quite a while since I started on this trip. I mean, it is a full-time job, so I haven't really been active in the music industry all that much anymore. But yes, that's one of my biggest passions. What does music okay. give you? What does it do <coughs> for you? Oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Music just lends a whole nother level of experiencing life. Um, you know, if you watch a movie and you take the music away from it, it's not the same. Definitely not. Yeah. You know, it's just it it just takes you to another level, and it's it's a it's a global language. People understand it. I I mean, mm. we can listen to, I don't know, let's say, Edith Piaf, a French song, and you'll understand what she's what she's saying or what she's singing about. You know, mm. you don't have to speak the language to understand the music. So mm. that's why I I I'm just. I'm in love with music. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, what is your what 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 are you what is your bigger purpose outside of yourself? What is what is it you you, you wanna you wanna reach and achieve? Nothing infuriated me more than being forced to stay awake in a geography class at school with some wheezing grey head <laughs> chap on screen <laughs> <laughs> watching videos <laughs> and he's holding up a crustacean and fourteen thousand million years ago. <laughs> going i can't understand this oak i can't relate to him i don't know who he is and every second week we got a half hour video of this guy talking about some damn crustacean in the himalayas <laughs> <laughs> and how it got there and i say mm. and i said how much cooler would it be if you actually met the guy or you could follow him live or there's a whole story and hey he came to my school and we chatted and now he's there and he's bringing back the video obviously as technology changes over the years hey now we can broadcast it live Mm. And you think, wow, can you imagine live tracking this person or this convoy or whole expedition across a continent around the world to go and show 
you know, here's here's a crustacean in its current form, and we found it at Cape Point. Mm. Hang on, here's one that looks exactly the same, and we found it on the slopes of Kilimanjaro. <laughs> now, why is this here mm. when it's exactly the same thing there? Yeah. Bringing that story together, bringing it real, making the classroom alive. Um, I've partnered with an organisation in the UK called Education Through Expeditions, and when it comes to climate change. They've got expeditions and the guys trekking for weeks to get to glaciers and they're sitting there filming. Drip, <laughs> drip, <Wow. laughs> drip. But there you can see their heart rate, the altitude, the whole expedition coming in to get to that glacier. Mm. So it's good a mix, good mix yeah. of different things. You've yeah. got all your sciences, but plus also the message. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, yeah. of course, that you they can also do this. Yeah. So Very cool. Making it more tactile, awesome. more, yeah, more interactive, more, more real. real. More yeah. real. Um, classroom is not... A textbook anymore. I saw a PowerPoint presentation this morning. People I'm staying with up here. It says, did you do history at school? I says, yeah. I says, did, you, did, you, did you study World War II? I said, yeah. She says, watch this. And someone has taken weeks to put this together in PowerPoint because, <coughs> damn, impressive skills. But it's basically got the whole progression of Europe through World War II. Wow. Oh, yeah. So every time you click, oh, it's wow. like, <coughs> there's a new flag and an arrow. And then you hear, poof, poof, poof. <laughs> You see the paratroopers drop in, and then the color moves in terms of yeah. which country is holding that tear. And there's the whole progression of the war. And I thought, could have saved us five months in matric history yeah. <laughs> and just shown <laughs> us that. <laughs> and everybody would have got it. So suddenly it's interactive, it's alive. Yeah. Yeah, I think if we, use, <coughs> if we use all our senses, because um, that's basically what's happening. We're getting more visual, we're getting, getting the auditory, we're getting almost a kinesthetic, we're getting all the... The sense is in there, and we learn so much easier than just reading it from a book. Um, mm. Yeah, mm. It's, it's brilliant. So you guys, have, I think, are taking a lot of technology with you in order to <laughs> give us, as the followers, <laughs> <laughs> that experience. Yeah. So yeah, you get everything from fancy little phones and cameras and... So yeah, everyone, we're going to give you just now the ways to, to track and, and follow um, the, these two stories, but... It's how are awesome. we going to follow you? What, how are we going to know where you are and what's what's happening? Um, well, on my side, I mean, obviously doing regular updates as regular as possible, and um, on and Facebook, on and on Twitter, Facebook and Twitter, okay. and on my blog side, um, do regular posts, just update people of where I'm at and what's happening. Um, and experiences along the road, videos, photos, that kind of thing. How are you yeah. going to be connected? How is um, <laughs> basically, in general, with a cool Nokia N8. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good sponsor, <laughs> plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Nokia, Nokia has been very Funky cool. Funky phones. Giving <laughs> us N8s, yeah. So that's you both got the N8, huh? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so they are really, they're really awesome. So that's going to be my my constant companion on this trip. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Ray, how are we going to know where you are? Uh, I've got, fortunately, I've got a company in Cape Town who's custom developing a whole bunch of stuff for me, um, which will give you my position. Um, worst case, every 15 minutes update. Satellite data costs a fair whack, so mm -hmm. wow. worst case, every 15 minutes. And with that will be heart rate data as well. So you can see that I'm still alive. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, give you temperature and altitude as well. So you can actually see a little bit more detail of what's going on. Um, that'll be overlaid over Google Maps. So you can s switch to satellite view and see more or less the terrain I'm in as well. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, a combination of Nokia N8, GoPro cameras and satellite terminals and solar panels and battery packs and dynamo hubs and yeah now yeah. Just, just briefly you guys both have have a website up have a <coughs> blog up where people can see what you guys are using and what you guys are doing yes. yep. um, what are they Yolandi what's your mine is Yolandi J-O-L-A-N-D-I-E hyphen rust dot blogspot dot com okay yeah and where you go shova360 dot com so S-H-O-V-A and then numerals 360 dot com People can see there what you guys are using, technology using, Followers, bicycles yeah. you're bicycles, using, yeah. everything. Yeah. Also, if the guys go to the show notes, I'm sure yeah, Talana's going to be putting all those links out. On there, yeah. So check so it out, guys. So if you missed it and didn't write it down quickly, cool. just you. go to uh, wiki.rtstar.tv. Sweet. Cool. Yeah. Do you want to so pull up the camera? So I just see you have a chair and you're mentioning it. Just <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there we go. go. 
That very is cool an HD camera with wide angle lens. Um, waterproof housing that's on here at the moment is waterproof to 60 meters. Wow. So there's not much chance of uh, <laughs> it getting wet or damaged <laughs> like all my other cameras uh, <laughs> have been done. Um, SD card so that can slot out and you can actually through by hook or by crook you can get it into the N8 to dump and edit video and all the rest. And you can even set it to take regular still photos as well. So if you don't want to necessarily take video, um, you can set it to set interval and just take a whole bunch of, mm. bunch of still photos. Yeah. So, yeah, very cool. Wow. Yes, they're awesome. So it's one of the things we want to do in the show as well and is to, to talk about a book every every time. And we'll, today we want to talk about Paolo Co Coelho, Coelho <laughs> the <laughs> alchemist. And we thought it was very fitting because the... I don't know if you haven't read it, but it's highly recommended. It's, it's so if you hold up to the camera, you can actually see it properly. Cool. There we go. Nice. Um, it's based by a guy who goes on a journey, or he has an urge to to follow something and follow this this urge within him, and he ends up going on a, on a long journey. And I suppose the main message of, of the whole book is that anything is possible if you really, really mm -hmm. want it. And that's what we thought was so fitting with um, Yolanda and Ray's show. story, is that... They really, really want this experience and, and this adventure, and they're making so much behind the scenes happen. And one of the things about in the in the book is um, they talk about the fear of failure seems to be one of the greatest obstacles to happiness. What do you guys have to say about that? Like the fear of failure, and and maybe linked to that is is how I know you, Landy, You've had a lot of people that haven't supported you. Yeah. So yeah. how have you managed one your own fear, but also other people's fear? It, it's it's actually quite interesting to see how um, even people's how they react towards what I'm supposed to do or what I'm about to do how that's changed over the years I mean when I just started out I had so many people telling me you'll never be able to do this mm -hmm. you know and over the years now um, I have so many people supporting it and you know telling me on a daily basis you know we're right behind you you know and go mm -hmm. for go it for and it. yeah so I think uh, for people, for all the people out there, <coughs> when they see people doing stuff like Ray and I are doing, it just opens up a new world to them. They just kind of realize, wow, well, I mean, if they can do that, what am I not capable of? And it just puts yeah. things into perspective for you. And you think, you know. So have you ever been fearful though of failing, of something no. that's not working? Yeah. I don't mind failing. It's it's. You How know, do you see failing? I just see you? it as a great lesson. You always learn something out of it. So I mean, if I fall, that's it's great. You know, it's 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 worthwhile. Just get back up and keep going. Mm. Just do it again. So Sorry, uh, quick all. question, sort of related to this. How did you start? How did so I imagine start? That's the, it's the major fear question, in the yeah. beginning mm. of yeah. all because at that point you've got nothing yeah you know once you've got your first success it becomes easier and easier i would imagine mm. but how do you get over all that initial fear to actually take the first step i think well it all started really really the first trip i did was in 2004 when i cycled through israel and it was that was a bit crazy because at that time the whole Gaza war was at a height, so it was troops and people shooting and Wait, that's you why going you're crazy. So prepared. <laughs> yeah, you and cycled and well through the war basically. Basically, basically. Wow. and <laughs> I I remember thinking, I mean, everybody was freaking out, and I was like, "This is so cool! <laughs> I'm having so much fun!" <laughs> and I realized that okay, maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And then when I got back for a couple of years, tried the whole corporate thing really doesn't work for me and then did the first trip was cycling from Joburg to Cape Town just to test it out and I knew this is what I want to do there's just mm, it's just such a knowing no when other you way find, it's so find your path so you know it's embedded so I don't know in my being I wouldn't be doing anything else yeah. I think kind of it kind of touches on perspective as well while you were cycling through those let's call it war-torn areas mm. um you obviously had a viewpoint and you were experienced in, in, a, in a certain way um, where other people were seeing it in a different way. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's important. Oh, yes. I mean, you, you get such an amazing experience. I think maybe that's maybe why I'm so attracted to cycling. I've Like when people ask me or they refer to me as a cyclist, I am not a cyclist. <laughs> 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 I just happen to do this on a bicycle. You use cycle, a cycle to go around. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the whole 
for me the main thing is the adventure and the experience and how, what you learn from it and how you develop as an individual and mm. and, and that's another like key, key theme mm. key theme from this book is it's very much it's the journey and that's where we grow and develop and that is the whole point yeah is the journey and i don't know if you have any comments on on failure and the journey that we made that you want to add you, mm. you learn who your true friends are oh yeah, yeah. very quickly um <laughs> moved across my Nokia. I didn't even bother plugging it into download from my old phone to transfer contacts across. It was like, okay, I'll just <laughs> type in family and the few key friends far <laughs> quick. <laughs> um, and then you see who after three, four years comes back and starts phoning you and starts saying, hey, you've, you've stuck with it. Well done. Yeah. And you go, okay, well, <laughs> I'll let you back into the circle for now, but <laughs> you're on the outer, <laughs> you're on the outer mm. um, perimeter. But yeah, it's, there's a, there are a lot of people behind it, um, be it product, family, friends, etc. And to go back to a company after you've been knocking on their door for three, four years, and eventually they say, okay, well, here's our product, go and use it, go and abuse it, go and break it. And you come back saying, oh, I didn't manage. <laughs> mm. If it's one thing because you've, you know, touch wood, doesn't happen, get shot, get run over, something like that, different story. Yeah. No. If it's you because physically and mentally you couldn't handle it and you pull out, different ball game yes. altogether. Yeah. That, that's that's different. just, <laughs> it can't happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's that constant drive. Have you guys also seen or, or, or experienced the, as you go through these stages of preparing for this and from the moment you say, listen, I'm actually going to do this. And as you plug, plug on and just keep working at it and working at it and you eventually see people actually turning towards mm. towards you Absolutely. instead of that initial re uh, resistance. I got given someone's phone number a number of years ago and got told, this is the guy you need to speak to at this company. Phone him. Um, he knows me, so use my name. Chat to him. Phone him. Don't get hold of him. I get through to the, the PA, the blocker. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> chat, 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 chat. She's happy. She's stoked. She says, sorry, you don't fall under our core categories. I said, no, 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 no. I've been told to speak to this guy who's your boss. He needs to make the call. I know it's out of the ordinary. No, terribly sorry. And I gave her a hard time on the phone. And eventually the boss obviously overheard her giving <laughs> me grief <laughs> and said, what do you want? She said, no, don't you take rejection. I said, not very well. <laughs> Just all early in the days. Um, and he said, okay, tell you what. Sounds interesting enough, but it's not our call. Send me an email. I said, cool. Thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it. I put the phone down and I thought, email. If his mailbox is anything like mine, that that mail's gone in an hour. Yeah. And it's off the first yeah. screen. Yeah. So he's never going to see it again. So I packaged the DVD. Video, photographs, little flash slide wow. presentation, all the rest. Production quality cover. I actually slotted into a bookcase with a whole bunch of DVDs. And I said, someone, check the new Expedition DVD I got. And I picked it up. And Jeez, look, this is amazing. I said, hey, this is your story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm planning ahead. And I went and I sat in the reception of their offices. 8.30 in the morning. I sat mm. there. And I said, well, he's not in. He's only in late morning. I said, well, I'm here. I'll wait. He walked past me five, six times during the day. He went out for lunch while I was sitting there. Wow. And eventually, 4.30 in the afternoon, he said, you still lay well here? And I said, mm. yes, I'm here. He says, right, what do you want? So I said, I need to give you this. And he said, well, I told you, send me an email. So I said, yes, email disappears. This it's going to lie in your office. When you open that drawer looking for your eraser, you're, <laughs> you're going to see, see this. <laughs> <laughs> when you look for that file, you're going to see <laughs> this. <laughs> Three years later, I got a call from him saying, come, let's talk. So, wow. so, so what I'm hearing about your stories is, is one is, is the perseverance, the mm. persistence in, in mm. one being sitting there for, for the entire day, but also the, the three years later. I mean, yeah. it's, it's people... Often, I think, because I mean, people say, oh, I'm going to do these things, and then they don't. It's, mm. it's the people that really do, that, that they kind of stand out, that here you are. I think that's where the later. dividing line comes in, you know. There are a lot of people that you all speak about doing similar things, but, um, you know, there's a difference between, you know, talking about it and actually doing and actually it. actually doing it. And I think a lot of people think that, you know, okay, well... It's going to take me three months of planning and then I'll be on my way. It's <laughs> 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 three months yeah. planning to devise your timeline and to your project just plan. Just like <laughs> <that>. <laughs> <laughs> your to-do list. <laughs> did, you guys, did you guys 
have an idea of how long it's going to take to plan this or have you just kind no. of taken it by? <laughs> <laughs> Look, your, your planning can literally go on for years. It can you, go on you, forever. You can plan until the day you are 80 and mm. you're ready to kick the bucket. Mm. And you can over plan it. Um, you've got to get to that point where financial and product support are make or break. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Unless you are in a financial position where you can go off and buy all the kit and go and self-fund, different story. But if you're not in that position, and invariably nine out of ten people, when that, by the time they're in that position to go and pay for their round, the Af- round Africa bicycle trip, mm. they've got family and kids and dependents yes. and house and debt and all that other kind of stuff. So there is, yeah, you got to juggle your your life and what's most important to you. So how do you set that date? How do you know? Listen, the yeah, 27th of April, it. I'm going to go. Or end of mm. August, I'm going to go. How do, you, how do you commit to that date? How do you, how do you know that's the <laughs> day you're going to go? <laughs> well, I mean, my dates, I my dates changed a couple of times. Yeah. Um, and then you just get to the point where you realize, you just know that if I don't set a date and keep to it, then it's never going to happen. Okay. And that's what happened to me now, because initially I was going to launch on the 11th of February, um, but I, s- I postponed it because I could see I, I don't have all the gear I need. Mm. I'm not there yet. And you start panicking a bit. And I'm like, no, 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 wait, I can't go yet. Um, and I took a step back and I said, okay, great. Okay, we'll postpone it once. I'll set a date. And come that date, no matter what, I'm leaving. So it just it just... You make a promise to yourself, mm. you know, and you just have to keep to it. It's the commitments. Yeah. I think it's also fine in seeing that, listen, if you, if, if at that date that you've set for yourself, you're not there 100%, it doesn't mean... You can't start. You, you can't start. Um, it's the same as writing a book. They say, like, you must write it, get it out there. It will never be perfect. There'll always be a spelling error somewhere. Yeah. And then but then addition two is where you perfect it, and you know, mm. the next edition. Yeah. So it's... It's <laughs> writing a book and <laughs> going on an expedition. I, I, there are similarities, I'll <laughs> no doubt about that. Go off on an expedition, <laughs> one bad judgment, call on equipment, yeah. planning prep, your medical kit. Mm. That's the difference between coming back alive or being yes. a corpse. Yeah. That's actually one question I had was just to change the, the direction here, but w- w- what's actually going to happen when you guys get injured physically? I mean, Ray, how do you... Um, the bottom half of my body can't get injured. Ah. <laughs> I'm still... I, was, <laughs> I have steel pistons. <laughs> no. Um, lower half of the body injury and to a degree back injury just isn't an option. Okay. Um, so, fortunately, over the past few years, I've learned how far I can and can't push the lower half of my body. I mm. um, actually lost feeling in my right leg for about three months. Okay. Just couldn't feel a thing i could stick pins in it and I, i'd bleed but i didn't actually feel anything it was, it was quite party trick. yeah it was, it was <laughs> fantastic <laughs> um and suddenly one day i hey i got a feeling again um so you learn and you go work back in the diary and you go oh hang on i did that on that day um okay. so bar an accident with the vehicle I and mean, jason lewis who went around the world that way, mm. west east got hit by a truck well wow. you can't avoid that but yeah. you can to a degree you can take all the precautions mm visibility on the road and i know talana is going to talk um, show us a cycling safety video yep, we um, must get onto that. visibility on the road right choices of roads and routes mm. yeah um listening to the locals if the locals say that road is dangerous you don't come out on the other end alive or with your kit mm. you find an alternate route yeah. um i walked from cape town to bike bridge last year and there were two places i wanted to go to on the route the rest was up to the locals. They decided my route. I'd say, hey, I'm here. I'm in your town. I'm trying to get to Sutherland. What's the best route for me? And they say, ooh, <laughs> that's 150 k's of dirt road and nothing else. Yeah. Where the soles of your shoes melt off in summer. Mm. Turn right. It's 20 k's longer, but you'll come out alive. And I was yes. like, <laughs> thanks very much. I'm coming out alive. Mm. So, yeah, so it's about important. taking risk, but, but, but calculated risk. So what I hear is a lot of preparation, or especially around the, the safety side and, and knowing yourself. So having had those those test runs, if you want to call mm-hmm. them, the little practice things, so you get to, to know your body. But then there's one part of safety. You know, I know a lot of women, well, being a woman, a lot of people ask you, you're a woman going on your own mm-hmm. for two years through Africa. Yeah. What is your your 
what do you say back to those people when they ask you about safety and your concerns on yeah i mean that's also i think in the top three questions always asked mm-hmm. and um yes of course there are risks it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman going around africa mm-hmm. it's it's a risky business so uh, of course i'm aware of the possible dangers and what can happen especially with current affairs in northern africa yes i know um and of course i keep tabs on what's going on but you know from a physical point of view like i'm currently undergoing advanced tactical training yeah it's such advanced i'm just tell everyone so advanced this training that that you were actually um you were kidnapped kidnapped on saturday <laughs> as part of it tell us about that <laughs> it's held hostage um, and well i mean the guys that are giving me this training these are highly trained special forces operators mm. And they take the, so they take it very seriously, and of course, as they should. But they're awesome. And Saturday's session, um, we had night training. I knew it was going to be night training, and that's it. I didn't know what's what else to expect. And it was very much. I've been training with two of the guys there, and I was going to meet a third one on Saturday evening. So the, uh, one of the guys came and picked me up from home, took me through, and as we were waiting for them. And it's pitch black dark outside. And I just saw this firecracker come over the wall. And I said to him, no, man, there they are. Because I spotted it. And I thought, ha, ha, see, it's going to take more than that to catch me out. It was one of these bomb crackers. So off goes the bomb. And the next second, I mean, I really did not expect this. But they yanked me out of the car. These two guys, fully dressed in camera, I mean, fully dressed in their gear, threw me down on the floor, um, blindfolded me. So it's, it's a very realistic it's a very realistic like you have just been kidnapped kidnapped by rebel forces somewhere in africa how are you going to handle this mm-hmm. so they took me through the entire drill um like really realistically and she came out flying colors i can say <laughs> what, what was the one big thing you got out of that <laughs> um keep your wits about you stay calm be aware of what's going on around you um you know just keep a clear head and breathe <laughs> <laughs> and and the whole point of doing the, this training because i want to show you guys the, this video now but the, the whole point in the, the training is as i understand from my perspective is just so that, so that you are prepared so if you ever yes god yeah. forbid in one of those situations you can handle it yes but you also have the confidence to it's just giving you extra confidence and definitely definitely i mean um when they say to me that they want to sponsor me this training you know, the first thing that went through my mind is this is awesome. I have no doubt in my mind that I can handle any situation mm. that I'm, I find myself in. But now I have the physical know-how of, to, of how to handle, you know, potentially hectic situations. <laughs> so, yeah. and, and she does. She's told me some of the stuff <laughs> she does. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we want to show you this, this little video and we're going to show it in a moment. But I, I think it's, it's very much about just showing how what we call filters your your perception of the world has such an impact so maybe actually before i say any more um in a moment i think and, and probably i didn't even tell you that it's it's tim who's doing our um, behind the scenes behind so the scenes and you hear him asking man. questions anymore you hear so voice out of the dark to me <laughs> uh, are you ready yeah so have a watch i am your father <laughs> Passes does the team in white make? So yeah, you should be watching how um how many times the team in white is throwing the, the ball and I wonder how many people actually got there. Did you get there? Watching. <laughs> The now that is the key point. Who saw the moonwalking bear? <laughs> Let's go back and see. And if you can't see me, he's actually just in accessing the, the screen right now. So yeah, it's easy to miss something you're not looking for. And this is, is um, look out for cyclists. Basically what they're trying to say is if you're not looking for a cyclist, you're not going to see, see them it. literally on, on the road. So do you want to comment on that before I comment on Absolutely. It's, it's about awareness for the motorists um, and they've got to be conscious of what's going on around them. Mm. However, I've got to take it back to the responsibility of the cyclist too. As well, yeah. Um, I'm African representative for an organization called the Ride of Silence. 
started off in the States in 2003 as a memorial ride for a club rider. They had 3,000 cyclists turn wow. up for the first event. We now hold over 300 events annually around the world. Wow. Northern Hemisphere it's happens... Like uh, Northern Hemisphere happens on the second Wednesday of May in the evening. Mm-hmm. Southern Hemisphere happens on the Saturday thereafter. So this year, 21st of May in, in South Africa, Joburg, Cape Town, PE, Victoria West, we've got an event. Wow. <laughs> and we've got an event in Robertson. Um, and what we're trying to hey, say is, hey, motorists, we here, we actually legally vehicles on the road. Mm-hmm. So same road, same rules, same rights. But we're also appealing to the cyclist to say, hey, guys, we have a responsibility just as you mm. do when you're in a car to brake, to signal, all the rest. We've got to be visible. We've got yeah. to, to make people aware. Um, and also then. be aware because I was actually driving the other day and these two cyclists were so busy talking to each other and the guy just kept swerving in front of me. And it's like, how am I meant to be yep. aware of you if you're not even aware that I'm behind you? Um, so it's, bright, it's like, bright clothing, conscious. Um, you've actually got to think in advance, sadly, for the, for the motorists. Yeah. Um, but just visible 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 if it means wearing bright neon yellow clothes and you don't look cool on your bike wear bright neon clothes on your bike at least you're alive yeah yeah Um, Yeah. i think it's a i think it's a it's important we as we said it's i think it's a team effort we can call it a team effort between cyclists and between motorists and 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 pedestrians i mean anyone on the roads Mm. Uh, we got to realize that you know all of us have to use this road where we're on Mm. either for pleasure or for work um yeah, let's let's keep an eye out for yeah. each other. Yeah. Definitely. So, so besides, obviously, that important point that, yes. that it's yeah. all of us on the road. Why I w- we wanted to show you that this video was for me. It, it it's a such a simple mm. way of explaining how what we call f- um, in psychology that our filters, how the way we perceive the world influences everything. So mm. that in that video, they preset a filter. They tell you to look for how many passes does a team in white make. So. All you see and all you're looking for is the team and wire to throwing the ball. So you don't see the most bizarre thing of this bear moonwalking through the video because you're, fil- you're filtering out, you're de- literally deleting everything. Mm-hmm. And every single person I've ever showed the video to never sees the bear the first time. I think, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's look at the bigger picture there as well. Let's, let's see because we're talking about let's, you know, what's possible. Mm-hmm. Now, if we don't actually see what's, what's possible, possible, if we're not open and aware mm. of what's around us of what's possible you know we're not going to see it and i think that's kind of what we're trying to achieve with the show is we brought you guys on here and, uh, to show people that open those filters to see that guys you know there's more going on and, and those kind of things that you might want in your life is possible and it uh, probably right there in front of you you're just not seeing it because of it. whatever have you been conditioned we're not saying it's right or wrong, our conditioning. We're saying it, that that is how There's we are actually wired as humans. Yeah. Yeah. That is how this world works, is that we develop filters. So it's all about exposing yourself to, to new things so that those filters become wider and just more, you, you get to notice more and see more that's happening right there in front of you. Well, you, you look at the Vasco da Gama, Bartholomew Dias, those days. Yes. Yeah. Um, hey, the world's flat. The, world, <laughs> the world's conical. We're going to fall <laughs> off the edge. <laughs> Man, we can't go there. What? Yeah. Uh, there's a whole bunch of sea here. What's on the other side? Exactly. Why have we changed from that and from caveman going, hang on, this is a rock. Maybe if I use this properly, I can open this fruit a bit easier or I can kill that animal a bit quicker. Hey, I can eat better. Mm. Why have we progressed from that or egressed mm. back to, right, I'm going to finish school. I'm going to go to varsity. I'm going to get a job. And um, 2.3 uh, children. 2.3 <laughs> children, white picket <laughs> fence, 1.9 dogs. And a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why? We p- we're pushing bra- boundaries yeah. on technology. Hey, we n- new way to make this chip. Hey, we can get a faster mm. computer and a screen and this and that. Why are we and, r- and I just from say exploration to consumerism? It's, there's nothing wrong mm. if that is your dream. Your own personal dream is to just have family and yeah, live in the, in the really house. Really then really then do it to the best of your ability. Yeah. And and thoroughly love it and, and and enjoy it, but don't you know? Don't do it because society says you should, or mm. someone else says you should. Mm. do it because that is what you want to do. And I think that's what, what we're saying is, is you we, we got you to tonight. You both been these solo adventures because that is what you want to do. Mm. But you know, next next time we on the show, which will be in a month's time, we're going to have someone else on a totally different field doing what they want to do. But what I think what's coming out today tonight, and if I can just sum up, and you guys can tell me, is it's about having that, that reason, that, that passion, that, that big reason why you want to do it. 
being committed to mm-hmm. it, but actually a hundred percent, totally, this is and believing it so much that whenever people reject and say no, you can't do it, and those, it's like not believing them, believing yourself and your vision and your passion, and then taking the small steps, the like small little goals to get there, a lot of planning, but one. then that's still yeah. going at some point. And that's a big point: is believing in your yeah, own yeah. abilities. That's Sorry, I want to I want to highlight Talana while she's talking about dreams mm. and possibilities <laughs> and chasing yeah. little steps along yeah. the way. <laughs> Talana, and you're matchstick. <laughs> <laughs> How many steps and how many dreams and how many people have told how you you're nuts? Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. And you should just, just keep whatever you're trading for and just keep it for yourself. You know, especially when I go to the cash, 3,000 rand, just keep it for yourself. Don't yeah, much easier. Yeah, spend it. Spend it. But yeah, spend it. What would you guys, um, mm-hmm. Yolandi, what would, you, what would your advice be to people out there, people either in a situation where they want to attempt something but they're mm. not sure if they can, or people out there just, just exploring possibilities for their life? What would you, what would you say to them? I think the biggest thing for me is just start. It doesn't matter where you start, just start and mm-hmm. and take it from there. I mean, it's little baby steps and you action, <laughs> action, yes, yeah. just start something, you know, and just um, figure out. W- a lot of people don't know what they want to do with their lives. Um, mm. You know, if you ask them, "What's your dream?" It's like I don't know. So maybe start there. Figure out what your dream figure is. Out what you want? What you really want to do, and then just listen to. Y- that little voice inside of you and just go for it. Just go for it. Right? I want to be cheeky. I want to give two pieces of advice. Go for it. <laughs> 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 One is seek out the winners. Okay. Mm. Ignore the advice advice from those people who have not been there, who have not done it, who have not attempted it. Oh, Look out those who've done it, who've don't listen to someone about bicycle touring who's never been a bu- never been on a bicycle. <laughs> Ignore them. Mm. Look at the guys who have been on bicycle tours, for for the better or worse. Yeah, that's the one. I can't remember what the other one was. See, <laughs> oh, per, per, perfect person for an expedition. Short term memory. Yeah. Where am I going? Again? Damn, this is so sore. <laughs> Hang on, what's, what's, cool? what, what's the about? <laughs> well, while you then think of your your second point, because I think we'll come back mm. and then end on that. Um, there, there's just two other quick things. That's fun things that we want to just mention. The one is the. Pazis.com uh, yes. gizmo gadget thingy oh, yeah. application that Jack has found that he's yeah, been raving little, about. Um, yeah, a little tech, let's call it a little tech session for, for tonight. Um, Pazis, I've actually used for about six years now. Um, if you guys go to p- pzizz.com, um, it's, a, it's a device The you can actually load <laughs> on, your, on your phone. It's an application. It's an application. It's an application. It's not a geek talk. Right right <laughs> <laughs> Can we please get the uh, geek to explain geek. it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what, what, what the Pazuz does, there's two types. Um, it's an energizer, and we always talk about power naps. Mm. Now, the Pazuz uses a combination of sounds and, 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 and a person talking to you um, using a induction, a sleep induction. And for X amount of time, you can set it from 15 minutes to about 90 minutes. That will actually give you um, a lot more effective sleep um, as an eight-hour night. So for 90 minutes, you can effectively get eight hours of sleep um, as a power nap through the day. And, and the, the other application? The, s- the sleep app is basically um, to, to help you get to sleep and it gets you into a deep REM sleep much quicker mm-hmm. Um, restful and you just get energized when you wake are up. Are these both part of the same application? They are two different applications from uh, the same company. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. What's the name of the company? Uh, Pzzz. 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 Yeah. And the name of the two apps? Uh, it's Pzzz Sleep as far as I know and Pzzz, Pzzz Energizer. So I'm just getting <laughs> the information <laughs> about thing and I want. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the we'll, we'll put them in the, the notes. Yeah. Is, is it available for which I'm assuming this is on a phone? Yes. iPhone. Um, Definitely on an iPhone, I know that. Um, the old one was actually a little device that looked like an iPod. Um, I oh, okay, so there is actually a, a device as well. Device as well. Not sure if you still get that, but um, you probably do. Yeah. And so what, what I found very interesting, as Jack's been telling me about this, is the, the fact that I know the one, especially when you're sleeping, if you're, if you're in REM sleep and then you get disturbed, you actually feel less 
rested yes. than when you wake up just like coming out of REM mm. sleep. And that's what the device does. Is it, am I right? It, it just it actually somehow senses when you're coming out of REM sleep, and that's when the alarm will go off. Well, that's actually the other app. That's the other app. That's the other app. That's not the other, not the Energizer, the, yes. the other one. Um, we're talking about the um, Sleep Cycle app. Now, Sleep Cycle app is actually a, a application that um, detects your sleep patterns and it sets up your waking time when you're actually coming out of your deep sleep. So, we all go through half an hour sleep cycles, REM sleep cycles, or more or less half an hour anyway. Um, and it'll wake you up as you come out of that cycle and you'll be more energized um, mm. when you wake up. So those mornings when your alarm goes off and it just buzzes in your ear and you're mm. like groggy and falling all over the, sh- the show and need that shower to wake you up, you actually wake up when you're supposed to wake up. Oh. So yeah, that's why I find these, these quite useful. That happens quite often to me. Cool, <laughs> so there's a lot of app that you can all, all play with. Just drink more Red Bull. <laughs> 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 Gives you wings. And the other thing I wanted to just, just tell you before we come back to, to your, your thing was about, it's called the Dreamers Photo Shoot. It's an event happening on the 16th of April in Soweto, there by the Orlando Towers, and it's such an exciting event. And um, we'll put the, obviously put the link up in that, but it's, it's basically the... Um, the photographer, I'm just trying to find his name here. It's one of the top photographers in the world. He's been going around to all the major cities and taking portraits of dreamers. So in South Africa, we're actually going to try and be the, the biggest group of dreamers <laughs> in, in his whole collection of photographs. So he's going to be up there at the top of the towers and there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of people below or all have a dream, all dressed in white. They're going to be part of it. So I'm going to be there and if anyone wants to join me, you, you're welcome to. Um, What's the date again? 16th. It's a Saturday, the 16th of April. And I'm also going to be going under under the, the banner of um, a Story Scarf. So what this is, is a wonderful um, organization who is, is taking um, young children from disadvantaged backgrounds and, and they're de- creating scarves and then sending scarves to, to other countries, to other disadvantaged children with the, the story about themselves. And then the story comes back from whoever that scarf went to and it's breaking barriers between how cultures. Do we, how do we find out about that? And where do we... So uh, Facebook, it's, it's on Facebook. It's called um, Dreamers Photo Shoot. And I'll we'll put up the link on, on, on the show notes. Okay. I think that, that's the best. So Ray, have you found you your... Uh, yes. Yes, there we go. Let's go walking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not talking about a normal hiking trail. I'm not talking about mm. going to the whale mm. or this or that or an overnighter. I'm talking pack your bags. Yes. And set a destination. Go walk That can about. be 200 k's from home. It can be 100 k's from home. But don't say, oh, I'm not fit enough to do it. Walk every day for a few months. Get fit enough to do it. And go walking. Gives you 24 hours a day to think. Leave your phone at home if you can. If not, turn it off and only have enough battery and leave your charger at home. Mm-hmm. Find some weird phone with a random connection that no one <laughs> is going to have. <laughs> it, it changes your perspective. Um, yeah. From a car to motorbike, obviously now you've got wind in your hair, to a bicycle, suddenly from 100 k's an hour, you're traveling at 15, 20, 25 k's an hour. Walking, you're, tra- you're traveling between 4 and 6 k's an hour. I tell you now, it changes your perspective of the world. It changes people's perspective of you. Mm. And you'll very quickly figure out what you do and don't want in life. Yes. Well, um, you can see That's the same wonderful. mountain range for 12 hours in a day, day after day. Mm. <laughs> and it changes everything. Excellent. Being told yeah. to cut it. So, good night, everyone. Thanks for joining. <laughs> 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 and yeah, t- thanks so much. I think that is such valuable tips. And I think thank I've just guys. learned a lot as well. So, thank you, Landy and Ray, for, for joining yeah, us. Guys, thanks thank you. Thanks, thanks for the invite. Jack, thanks. And yeah, yeah we'll, uh, we'll be following you. Yeah, yeah, and definitely. you can follow us on the show on our um, Twitter account, which is LT Possibility, and find us on Facebook, Let's Talk Possibility. And yeah, otherwise, we will be back in about a month's time. We're going to just finalize the date, and we look forward to sharing more exciting stories and exploring what's possible. What is really possible. Thank yeah. you, guys. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Cheers. Cheers.